Hi, Frank Giannino here. I'd like to talk to you about finding the right running shoe. It can be very confusing to go on the internet, walk into a store, look at all the selection, and know what to get. It's even more frustrating when you see friends wearing one shoe, you try them on and they don't always work. Well, here's your best bet to getting the running shoe to fit you well. Number one, it's called the manipulation test. Take the shoe and make sure that it has a reasonable amount of flex in the front. If the shoe buckles right here, just literally buckles, that's not good. You want a reasonable amount of flex. You never want the running shoe to bend easily in the belly right here. If it does bend easily right in that area, in the shank area, uh, that shoe is going to hurt your foot. So you want to make sure it's got the right amount of flex. Secondly, you want to make sure it has the right amount of torsion. So torsional rigidity is really important. You don't want the shoe to bend and flex too easy because it's, again, not going to perform for you well. So both items are important. The flex test at the ball, and you want to make sure that the torsional rigidity is good. Lastly, always you want to make sure you have a nice firm heel in the back. If you can take a heel, press on it, and literally buckle it right to the floor of the shoe, that makes for a shoe that is uh, not going to work for you. So make sure that shoe hugs your heel, has the right amount of flex, and the right amount of torque and that shoe has a chance of giving you a pretty good ride. Also in the upper you want to make sure the shoe is relatively soft to allow for elongation and expansion and uh, of course the shoe must fit. You should never be crowded across the, the ball to ball area or in the toe box. Make sure you got plenty of room and the biggest thing we've talked about in the past too is make sure your heel is not sliding out of the back all the time. So lock it Make sure there's room for expansion. Make sure the shoe has the right features. Now there's two types of shoe. The first shoe is the cushion only shoe. The cushion only shoe is a basic uh, EVA or combination cushion sole shoe. There are many different types of cushion shoe, but they usually have a, a white midsole in most cases, unless they're uh, a dark color, and there's no uh, special uh, support features built into the midsole of the shoe. All kinds of really good cushion only shoes from the major brands in today's market. The other kind of shoe is called a, a support shoe. Cushion with support means that as the entire foot flattens inward toward the middle line of your body, the shoe has some kind of denser material built into the sole. So you have your normal cushion, but a denser material built in the sole. Now there are many ways to present the supportive uh, shoe. And there are many categories of supportive shoes. Some are mild, some are extreme. Uh, but the bottom line is there's cushion and there's cushion with support. So here's that color-coded area in a very popular Brooks model called the Adrenaline, one of the most popular shoes in the running shoe business, especially for those that are out there performing every day. So cushion and cushion with support. Uh, then you also want to make sure that your shoes have a removable cushion. We always need that option in our shoe, so don't buy the shoe unless you've checked to make sure that the insert comes out. Uh, in all the shoes made today, they are merely flat cushions that are inside the shoe. Uh, when warranted and pain is usually the invitation, uh, we want to go ahead and, and uh, obviously enhance the fit of the shoe with some kind of a, a better cushion. Now, within the two categories, there are many subcategories. Cushion also has many different weights. You could have a shoe that's 14 ounces, you could have another shoe that's 6 ounces. So some of the shoes have become pretty lightweight, have special sole designs to support the ride, and again those basic needs though are still there. The relative amount of flex, the right amount of torsional rigidity, and um, a nice firm heel cup in the back. But the weights are different. Now when it comes to the support category, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, some of the shoes are going to have a uh, a very light you know, weight to them and others are going to be heavier. Now, in both categories, cushion only and cushion with support, there's also two types of shoe. There's the, there's the road shoe primarily for road running and then there's the, uh, the trail shoe. The trail shoe uh, usually features some kind of an aggressive sole. Again, the basic features need to be there. There are two types. There's the, uh, the one with the uh, arch built into the sole and there's the regular cushion trail shoe. Uh, they come in many different weights as well. I think you're kind of getting the flow of the picture here uh, between the different types of shoes. Cushion, cushion with support, uh, trail shoes. Uh, they all have lighter shoe samples out there and they have heavier shoe samples. Some of your trail shoes also feature Gore-Tex. 
Uh, Gore-Tex is a one-of-a-kind uh, yoke uh, that completely wraps the foot and uh, as long as the water is not pouring over the edge of the boot or the gusset on the shoe, you usually uh, get pretty, uh, keep a nice pretty dry ride. A little caution about Gore-Tex, it does get a little hot, but uh, it stands up to its claim of waterproof breathable better than any other uh, fabric uh, guaranteeing waterproof in the world today. Um, also what deserves a little uh, mention is, again, the minimalist shoe. Now when you go to minimalism, remember we've talked about five fingers. There is no flex or torsional rigidity. These are shoes meant to work with the bare foot. Whether it's Vibram, whether it's a, a track, spike, or cross-country racing shoe, there's not a whole lot of support there. It's meant to be a little emulation of your bare foot. Uh, you have many different types of spiked uh, options out there. You got some with a spike option, some without. They just call them spikeless shoes. And then, of course, you've got your ever uh, emerging collection of minimalist uh, or barefoot running shoes uh, that have a road emphasis and a trail. And there's a whole new category out called fitness in the minimalist category in the minim minimalist shoe as well. And then uh, there are more. Uh, cerebrally uh, designed shoes like the uh, the Convaras by Saucony uh, that are re retaining traditional midsole technology but really going after that barefoot design. Again, you do not wear orthotics with minimalist shoes. You just wear them the way they are. Uh, they are very light in all cases. There are no heavy minimalist shoes that are out there. They're extremely lightweight and they are just meant to preserve the integrity of the barefoot. So in review, you have cushion only shoes, you have shoes with arch built in the sole through denser material. You want the inner sole to come out of the shoe. You want them to flex properly, torsion properly, and have a firm heel counter. And there are many different weights of shoe being offered in both categories, both the cushion and support categories. Some are extremely lightweight and some are, are heavy. And again, you have all forms of minimalist shoe. Uh, that are out in the marketplace today. It's a rapidly changing business, it's a very exciting business, and I'm, uh, it's a privilege for me to share some of these stories with you.